If you are the face of your brand, having a header section with a hero image is a good idea to instantly connect with your visitors. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set this up with Thrive Architect. Hi, I'm Hanne from Thrive Themes. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Those really nice looking header sections with big images that all the pros are using on their website. And probably you want to have the same on your homepage. And that's exactly what I will show you. So this is what we are gonna build. This kind of layout with the big image and then text on the side. Now the most difficult thing with this layout is that it often looks good on desktop, but not so good on smaller screens and we are gonna fix that too. Let me show you how this one looks on mobile. So I can use the inspect function to simulate what this page looks on mobile and as you can see this is on an iPhone 6 and so we actually replaced the header image with this nice looking um, circle image and I will show you how to do that too. So let's get started. First of all we're gonna add a new page from here, we want to load a blank landing page so that we don't have any distraction on this page. So go to the page setup, change the landing page template and pick for the blank one. Now we have a blank slate to start from. Now, first of all, we want to add a background section and we want this background section to stretch full width so that the whole screen is covered with this section. So for that, we use this toggle and say stretch to the full screen width. Now the next thing you want to do is to go to the background style and you always want to use a solid color first on your background section, even if you're going to add an image afterwards. The reason for this is that a solid color will always load faster than the image and so the text that is overlaid on the image will already be readable. So here we're going to add this dark blue as the color. Let's apply this. Now the next thing we want to do is add the image in this background section. So here, choose image and we have our background image here. Now, this is a pretty big image. As you can see, it's like 2600 pixels wide and this will help us to cover the entire screen. Now, one of the important things is to use a big image, but to have a small image size. So you don't want this image to be multiple megabytes big, for example. So you can use an online service such as Kraken to actually optimize your image and to make it smaller. Or if you are using a Thrive Team, then this will be done automatically once you upload the image. So as you can see here, it's a big image, but it's only 100 kilobytes big. One thing that's very important is make sure that here in the size you have the full size that's selected because as you can see you can actually insert the image on different sizes so these are like the wordpress sizes but you don't want to do this because then you will have a blurry image on your page so make sure full size is selected now insert this and here in the image display we're gonna choose stretch the reason for this is that the image will be stretched to the full size of the screen. So even if somebody is looking on a bigger screen than the one you are working on right now, the image will still cover the entire section. Let's apply this. Now, as you can see, we can't really see the image yet. So for that, we go to the section options and to the section minimum height. Let's switch to VH because this will allow us to have a percentage of the screen height. And I want to set this to be like 75. The reason for this is that this will allow to have most of the above the fold section that is actually occupied by this image, but not too much either, because you want to make sure that people see that there is something else underneath this image on your website. That's why I think 75 is a good compromise. Now that we have the background image in this section, let's add our text element in here. As you can see, we want to have this title and then a paragraph and a button and everything has to be on the right side of this image. Let me show you different ways how you can get this effect of having the text on the right side of the image. And let me show you the one that you should be using because of the effect that it will have on the other views on mobile and smaller screens. So first of all, let's add a heading in here. And let's go to our text options and make the font color white. Now, as I said, there are different ways to get this text to be on the right side of the image. So the first one 
would be that you play around with the layout and the positioning. So you could add padding, so which means that inside the text element, you keep the text element full width, but you push the text to the side. So let me show you what happens. So here you can, for example, push this to the side. So add almost maybe like 600 something padding in here. And so this means, as you can see, that the whole paragraph section stays as wide as it was, but inside we are actually adding this spacing. So nothing else will be able to occupy this space. Now, the other thing that you could do, let me set this back to one, is you could add margin to this header section. So that means that you push the whole section to the sides and you make this Let's also put this on like 600. And so now we have the header element, but we have a margin on the outside of this element. Now, both of these options are actually not ideal. The reason for this is that margin and padding will stay the same even when you go to smaller screens. This means that it will always keep these 600 pixels from the side. And so if you go to a really small screen, it will still try to keep this 600 pixels. So that's really not a good way to align your text because when you go to mobile, for example, as you can see, like the text isn't even there anymore because it got pushed 600 pixels, which is outside of the screen. So even though this looks right on desktop, it's not the right way to align your text. The right way to do this with only one element would be to set the maximum width to, for example, 50 pixels, and then to align it to the right. So this is the right way to align, because now when you go to mobile view, as you can see, it stays the same. It still keeps this 50% to the side, but you don't have 600 pixels. It will decide on the 50% based on the screen size. And that is what you want. Now, because we have multiple elements, rather than setting this setting for every element, I will add a content box so that I can simply add the heading and the paragraph and the button inside this content box. And then I can align the content box to the right. So that's actually the easiest way if you have multiple elements. So let me set this back to 100 and to no special alignment. And let's add a content box in here. And now this content box, we want it to be, in our case, it's 40% and centered to the right. And now we can simply drag our heading element in here. And then we have our paragraph also in this box. And let's make this paragraph white. And now we have the button that we want to add in the same box too. Now that we have all the elements in the content box, we can align this content box to be a bit lower on the page. So now I can add top margins on this box. As you can see for the moment, the text is not super readable on this image. And this is something that you will often have if you use images on a background section. Now the easiest way to fix this is to go into your background section and put a colored overlay on your image. Now in this case, we want to make sure that the left side of the image is still visible because we want the hero image to really stand out and that only the right side of the image is covered so that the text is readable. And for this, we are gonna use a gradient. So let's add a gradient layer here and we want the side, so the left side to be transparent. So we can just put this to transparent and the right side, we want to have this dark blue again. Now, as you can see, if you just use these two markers, it will go from transparent to dark blue over the whole image. And that's not the effect that we want because we want the left side of the image to be completely transparent. So for that, click on the gradient and let's add another one at like 45. And we want this one to be completely transparent too. So now between 0% of the image and half of the image, it will be completely transparent. And now we can add another marker on let's say 60. And this one we want to be blue, but we already want this blue to be a little bit faded out. 
And then we can have another blue marker on maybe here somewhere that is also so this blue but that is 100 percent so now as you can see the right side of the image is covered in the dark blue 100 percent and then we have like this great this overlay between the transparent into the blue and you can play around with this a little bit right you can just like change the markers and you will see what this looks like on your image and so you can make sure this looks good once you're happy with this gradient don't forget to hit the apply button so that it stays there and now we're already pretty close to what we want. One of the things here is that I actually want to have this Hi, I'm Elena text in um, more like a handwritten type of font. And for that, you have all the Google fonts that are available immediately in Drive Architect. If you're not sure which one to pick, you can go to fonts.google.com. And here on the side, let's pick a handwritten. And let's add our text. And apply to all fonts and now you can immediately see what this looks like in different fonts so you can pick the one that you like once you've found this, the one that you like so here i like dancing script let's go back here select the text element and then in the font phase we can change this go to google fonts dancing script and now we have this nice handwritten effect on the title Let's make this a little bit bigger. Now this font, I want it to be railway. So that's also a Google font. So we can just do exactly the same. And now for the button, we want it to be this transparent button with only the border outlay. And this is what we call a ghost button. So here in style, you can actually change and go to ghost button. This will immediately give you this effect. Or you could simply put the background of the button on transparent and pick the border color you want. So for this, I want to have in borders and corners, I actually want this to be a white border. And the same with the text. So let's go to the typography and let's make this white. To change the text, we can just click in here and change the text of this button. As you can see, we still have this green uh, color on hover. So for that, you select the button and here in state, you can go to hover and we actually want this to be this Bordeaux color, so apply. And now we have our Bordeaux as this hover color. I want this button to be a bit bigger, so I can here in button size, just slide this to make it more permanent, maybe like this. And I want to give it a little bit more space in between the text and this button, so I just, in the layout and positioning, play with the margins. Save. Now we already have this really good looking header section on desktop, but let's make sure that it also looks perfect on tablet and on mobile. So first of all, let's go to our tablet view. And as you can see, there are some things that we want to fix. Now this will really depend on what look you want to give. But one thing that I like with this particular image is to set the background section, the image, to set it to center. And this allows us to have like this very big um, image with her, her face very up and front, which I think looks good on tablet. And we could also set this minimum height a bit lower so that this covers less of the screen. Now, I, I like the way this looks, but you could also upload a specific image for the tablet view if you want to have a very specific layout on here. Or you could keep the image stretched and then have an overlay on the complete image. So this really depends on the effect that you are looking for. Now, let's go to our mobile view. And as you can see here, this really doesn't look good anymore to have this right aligned. So, and also this image doesn't make much sense anymore. So first of all, let us go to this background section and let's delete this image and this linear gradient. And now we just have a solid color. And this is actually a very good thing on mobile because it will also make the page load quicker. Now next we want to select this content box and instead of having it right aligned, we can left align it and put this again to 100% so that it covers 
the entire screen. Now from here, we can change the margins, the top margins, and we can center align the text inside here. And I'll probably also want to add some padding in this content box so that the text doesn't go all up to the side. So I can add here maybe a 10 pixel padding to each side. But now in the mobile view, we completely lost this personal branding element because we took out the header image. So we want to put something back in there. And like I showed you in the beginning of this video, we had this nice looking circle image on the mobile view that wasn't showing on any other view. So for that, we go to our desktop view and we're gonna add an image right under this title. I prepared this square image that's from the same picture as the background image. So let's insert this one and we make it smaller and let's add a border around this image. So in bordering corners, let's add a white border around here, three pixels, and let's make this a round image. And now let's just center align this. Now, like I said, this image, I only wanted to show on mobile. So for that, let's go to our responsive menu and put it on hidden on desktop, hidden on tablet, and automatically you will be only seeing it on mobile. So now when we go to our mobile view, as you can see, we have this image. I can still tweak it a little bit. So change the margins, for example, so that it actually fits the screen nicely. Same with this button, probably would like to put it a bit closer. But this is how you can use a hero image on your header section of your website. Have it look good on desktop, on tablet and on mobile. Now we can preview this and if we go back to our inspect, we can actually select here responsive and, and here we can set different widths. So if we start with like 1200, we can see that this is still looking good. Let's go to a thousand. And we start to be in the tablet mode, 900, and same here, let's go to 700, and you can see that we switch to the mobile view. So this is how you can make sure that your header image looks really nice on every screen size. I hope you liked this tutorial, and if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.